the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee, a blend of the world's choice coffees, which is now so very reasonable in price, present Zazu Pitt, Dorothy Lamour, W.C. Fields, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Hoagie Carmichael, Robert Armbruster, and Don Amici. This is the Chase and Sanborn Hour. This is the Chase and Sanborn Hour, and this is Don Amici saying hello. And Charlie McCarthy saying cheerio. Oh, kind of English tonight, eh, Charlie? Yeah, but definitely. Uh, I'm saying hello to everybody for Miss Zazu Pitt, whose delightful humor has made her one of our best-loved comedians. Yeah, every morning she's in my grapefruit. Yeah, who's in your grapefruit? Pitt. Best who? <laughs> oh, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> and for Hoagy Carmichael, who has a way of writing beautiful songs we never forget. Aren't you going to say anything about the Chase and Sanborn? Yes, Charlie. A good coffee. Well, there may be only good coffee to you, but I mean, it's bread and butter to Bergen and me. Yeah, to all of us, Charlie, yeah. including W.C. Fields. Oh, boo. Edgar <laughs> Bergen. A mild kiss. And Charlie McCarthy. Here ye, here ye. And Dorothy Lamour. Ah, uh, Lamour, I feel Lamour. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> and from Robert Armbruster, who conducts the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra in the title song from Shall We Dance? <laughs> That tune, Bob Armbruster has paid all the initi initiation fees necessary to make him a member in high standing of our company. Thanks, son. You certainly know how to spread out the welcome mat and make a fellow feel at home. But, you know, Bob, Charlie was rather surprised when he saw you. He expected to find a real old-fashioned maestro with sideburns well, and dialect. we wouldn't want to break the little fellow's wooden heart, would we? No. Uh -uh. Oh, so I will speak thick and excitable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the thicker the better, maestro. Well, now we go to work. Oh, the Bergens are coming around the bend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Professor Armbruster, I want to thank you. I think it was very nice of you to be willing to sacrifice part of your valuable time to help Charlie with his music. Yeah. I'm confident that Charlie has hidden talent. Oh, the stuff's there. It's mellow, but it's hiding. <laughs> yeah. You are here, Bergen. Uh, Get a load of that one. I you? shall be happy to help you, my little thumping. <laughs> What have we got here? Take the gum out of your mouth, Professor. So I, I remember as a little fellow, <laughs> a student days in Vienna. I studied there in Vienna. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, you killed me, Armbruster. You killed me. <laughs> yeah, 12 years in all I have studied, when still I feel that I know very little about music. Yeah, well, that's the way you impressed me, too. <laughs> I, uh, I, I studied in Paris. When in Moscow, when graduated with honors from the Vienna Card Stealing Conservatory. Oh, did you play contract or auction? Yeah, un pinnacle, <laughs> and also the violin. Uh-huh. And yet I perspired to greater heights. At 21, I studied for five more years yet on the violin. 
You know, you fiddled away the five best years of your life. You know that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How true and all that stuffing. Yeah. Uh, now tell me, Charlie, are you acquainted with Mozart and Beethoven? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Uh, yes and no. Uh, that is, I know them by sight. <laughs> you see, I studied music for two years. Same piece, too. <laughs> Still can't play it. <laughs> well, no wonder you can't play it. You have no heart. You, huh? you have no soul. I haven't even got a piano. <laughs> but I thought you had a piano, Charlie. Well, I did have one when things were going a little better. Oh, I see. And I was coming along fine, too, Mr. Bergen. I'd finished Mozart, and I'd started on Wagner when the piano went Bach. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, that was unfortunate. Yes. Well, I don't care. They gave me a bad buy. Yes. Of course, I gave them a bad check, too. <laughs> now, Charlie, as a student of music, can you explain what is important about the year 1756? Uh, 1756, uh, yes, of course, of course, of course, of course, uh, yes, now don't tell me, that's quite a thing, <laughs> I know it as well as I know my own name, can't even think of that now. <laughs> Mozart was born. I just guessed it, Mozart was born in 1756. Uh, ah, yeah. very good. Yeah. <laughs> now, what happened in 1762? 1762, oh, uh, uh, Mozart was six years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, at, uh, at six years, he gave his first recital. Uh -huh. And while still a boy, he wrote three great operas. Yeah. Can you name them in their order? Yeah, sure. Fifth, second, and third. <laughs> Charlie, you're not taking this seriously. No. No. I think the boy maybe would like music what is more Americanish, sure. Uh, how would you like to play the Stars and Stripes forever? I think it would become very monotonous. <laughs> I say a verse and two chorus is enough of any song. You know, the more I talk to you, Professor, the less I care about music. You know that? Yes. You will regret this later on, Charlie. Uh, yeah? uh, how true, my Wiener Schnitzel. It is a part of life. Every mm -hmm. human being wants first food, uh -huh. then clothing, yeah. and then music. Uh-huh. What, well, what do you want, Charlie? I'll take a corn fritter. <laughs> Maybe I'm prejudiced. I'm afraid so. You see, I had so much of it at school. You know Professor Bumduster, Rumduster, or Spaskester? Uh, I played a duet with Skinny Dugan at the House of Correction. Oh, was, it, was it a recital? No, it was a reform school. <laughs> that means that you play in front of an audience, you understand. A piano recital, an organ recital. Uh, yes, yes, we, there was a piano recital. Yeah. And what did you play? I just told you I played piano, you lump. Austin and Pepper is so chemical. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> Professor Armbruster wants to know just exactly what you played on the piano. Oh, so that's it. Well, our recital consisted of uh, Wagner, Mozart, and uh, Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a duet, and what a duet that was, too. Yeah. We were neck and neck for the first two pages. <laughs> Was Skinny Dugan the favorite? You don't tell me. <laughs> we were going along at a nice clip when uh, we passed the sign that said Accelerando, see? Yes. So we both gave her the gun, see? Yes. <laughs> well, believe it or not, we went so fast, we went right through the darn finish. Is that so? Yes. yes. Skinny fell off the bench and the end gate fell off the piano. <laughs> I just stood there and laughed. Play, Professor, play. <laughs> watching the first round of that musical bout, I'd call it a draw. But I still bet that Charlie learns music from Bob. When it comes to music, whether it's the slow, melodic rhythm of Stardust or the easy, swinging rhythm of Lazy Bones or Little Old Lady, we have present that modern music master, Hoagie Carmichael. And he's brought us a brand new tune written just for Dorothy L'Amour, which she and Hoagie are going to give its premiere performance. And personally, I think it's one of the swellest tunes Hoagie's ever written. Oh, now, wait a minute, Don. Don't build it up too much. It's just a little ditty I tossed off in a sentimental moment. A snap, huh? Sentimental moment and bing, a song. Yeah, bing sometimes, Rudy sometimes, a flop sometimes. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Songs aren't just tossed off, are they, Hoagie? Well, sometimes they are, but not often. Not often enough. But take uh, Stardust, for instance. Yeah, I'll take Stardust any time. <laughs> 
How'd you get that, Hoagie? Well, I guess it was on July the 29th, 1928, at 11.35 p.m., and I was whistling as I walked across the University of Indiana campus. Then I rushed to a piano, and I played, uh... And at 11.45, I had added the strain. And then, uh, well, let's see, it must have been, uh, oh, about ten minutes later, I was playing, uh... Midnight, you were still going strong. I huh? certainly was. <laughs> About five minutes later, I had the ending. Like this. So you see, it took about 30 minutes to write the entire chord. Well, then, I shouldn't think it'd be much work writing a song for Dorothy. Oh, it's even easier with such an inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, break down and tell us how this YouTube came along. And be truthful, too. <laughs> now, look, you got me in a corner. When I was asked to be on this show, I knew I'd need a new tune. And so one night, I tried to dream one up. But I fell asleep in the process. Did I inspire you to fall asleep? Well, not Dorothy, you know. <laughs> I suppose thoughts of you should have kept me awake, but they didn't. And all of a sudden, in the middle of a dream, I heard a bell ring and I reached for my alarm clock. Did you throw it out the window, Hoagie? That's right, Don, but it wasn't the alarm at all. It was the phone, and at the other end was Dorothy. I know, I get it. When you heard Dorothy's sweet voice, you said, this is how a dream should end, and from that came the title for this new song. Right? If you believe they lived happily ever after, you believe that. <laughs> I actually said, Dorothy, call me later, I've got a terrific headache. Yeah, but 20 minutes later, you had the song. No, Don, I still had the headache. <laughs> It wasn't until two or three days later that I really had the song. I should hate him for being so brutally frank. But honestly, Hoagie, it's a swell song. Hoagie Carmichael and Dorothy L'Amour sing This Is How a Dream Should End. Go ahead, Hoagie. Goodness lies all around me. Good is the way I feel. Beauty and love surround me. How could it all be real? Take it away, Dorothy. This is how a dream should end Having you here close to my heart This is how I pictured my romance would be Sweet as the moment when you're kissing me this is how my wish came true, having you near, never to part. I can well imagine the land of sweet pretend, cause this is how a story should be penned. This is how a dream should end. He's written another new song that we're all going to get in on later. But our special concern at the minute is how to be happy though hot. And since so many of us are looking for the perfect answer, here are some important facts about a cooling, refreshing summer drink. Iced coffee is in great flavor these hot summer days, and if you want iced coffee with plenty of full, refreshing flavor, please don't overlook this fact. Unless you're careful, the melting ice that cools your coffee can make it weak and watery, too. But that's easy to avoid if you'll just make sure you have more than enough rich, delicious flavor to start with. For extra strength, measure your coffee a little more generously than usual. And for extra richness, 
Always use the blend that gives you fuller, finer flavor. Chase and Sanborn coffee. As you know, is a rich blend of the world's choice coffees. And you always enjoy it at its best. For it's rushed straight from roasting to your grocer. And the date on every bag guarantees freshness and full-bodied flavor. What's more, dating and rapid delivery makes expensive containers needless. Instead, we pack Chase and Sanborn dated coffee in an economical dated paper bag. This saving in container cost enables us to buy finer coffee. So you'll get higher quality at a very low price. This rich, satisfying blend is delicious either hot or ice. Enjoy it often. Buy a pound of Chase and Sanborn dated coffee from your grocer tomorrow. We all love Zazu Pitt for his swell sense of humor in the many comedy roles he's played. But in the new picture, 52nd Street, Zazu's very happy because she gets a chance to play a sympathetic part instead of straight comedy. And she's even happier now, for she's going to show her gift for playing warm and human drama as Amanda in Hop of My Thumb, the wistful story of a little laundry grudge who dreams of the love and happiness she's never known. Miss Zazu Pitt. Hop of My Thumb, starring Zazu Pitts as Amanda and Don Amici as Horace, with Dorothy Lamour as Rose and Margaret Brayton as Gertie. It is a hot July evening in the basement laundry where Amanda works. The girls have finished their ironing for the day, and Amanda sits on the table, dreaming of the handsome stranger who left a shirt to be laundered almost a year ago and never came back. Amanda's never had a beau to take her out and give her presents, and it makes her sad to hear Rosie and Gertie talking about their plans for the weekend. Sure, he asked me. We're going to Coney Island to see the fireworks. You and Albert coming with us, Gertie? I'll say we are. Well, Amanda, got anybody to take you out tomorrow? Oh, I can't go anywhere tomorrow. Not in my circumstances. What do you mean, your circumstances? Oh, well, to, till he comes for me, you know. Till he comes for his shirt, you mean. The tall, handsome stranger none of us has ever seen and never will. Oh, yes, you will. We have an understanding. When he comes for his shirt, it's sort of a sign. And I shall know bright days are in store. Look, Rosie, here's his shirt, all wrapped up and labeled. Mr. Horace Greensmith, to be called for. Now, you give me that shirt. Not till you show us that pin he gave you, the one with the diamonds in it. All right, I will next week. But you give me that shirt before you muss it. Maybe he'll come for it today. Okay, take it. Say, when did you hear from him last? Oh, uh, last Wednesday. Uh, no, no, it was Tuesday. But you ain't seen him again. Uh, no, but he's going to send me something nice. I it's a heirloom. What you wear in your hair at the opera. A tarare. A tarare? Oh, I don't believe it. Oh, yes, it sticks in your head with spikes, and it's got diamond stars all around, just like a crown. And it glitters, splits to bind you. And then he's going to marry, I suppose. After he asked my father. Oh, you're just a workhouse girl. You never had no father. You find somebody to take you out tomorrow, Amanda. Then maybe we'll believe you. Come on, Gertie, we gotta go. Don't forget, Amanda. You're gonna show us one of his presents. Hey, Rose, wait for me. They might have asked me to go with them. They might have. But nobody ever does. Hello, shrimp. Where's the old lady who runs this place? Oh, Mr. Greensmith. I thought you was dead. And why should you think I was dead? Oh, it's like one come back from the grave. But I shall be all right in a minute. Yeah, we'll make it snappy. How about the shirt I left here? Have you sold it or lost it? It's all right, Mr. Greensmith. It's been took particular care of. Look, here it is. Why, good heavens, did you wash it only yesterday? Oh, yes, Mr. Horace. I've washed it every week since you left, so as to have it ready for you. Well, for the love of Pete. Hey, look, you don't think I'm going to pay for all that, do you? Oh, no, Mr. Greensmith. We thought we'd never see you no more. You've been away most a year. <laughs> so I was dead, was I? And the shirt was a souvenir. Now, who in the places wanted a souvenir of me? 
Not you. Hey, look, who are you anyway? Oh, I'm an orphan, but I don't say so to the others. The others? You mean to say there's any more here like you? Oh, no. I don't think there's any others anywhere like me. No. I bet there aren't. Of course, I'm not very tall. We don't grow much in the workhouse. But most of them large girls are sickle. Don't you think so, Mr. Greensmith? Ah, no girls is any good. I found that out. Oh. Oh, Mr. Greensmith. You ain't married, are you? No, no, not me. I know too much about it. Oh, I'm so glad. Are you in love, Mr. Greensmith? Hey, cut it out, will you? I came here for my shirt, not the jaw about my love affairs. I want to know particular. Well, I'm not in love just now. Now, what do you think of that? Oh, I expect lots of girls are in love with you. Oh, sure. Certainly, I can hardly get down the street. There's so many of them. Uh, you wouldn't say I was pretty, would you, Mr. Greensmith? Oh, I uh, really haven't thought about it. Uh... You wouldn't think about it, would you? Well, uh... Uh, But looks ain't everything, are they? Some of them pretty girls ain't really very nice. Mr. Horace. Yeah? You know... What? Oh, oh, I can hardly... Well, I can hardly tell you. But all the girls who work here say you're in love with me. What? Me in love with... Good heavens. You know girls will talk, Mr. Horace. You, you, you mean to say a bunch of girls think I am... Oh, oh that's rich. <laughs> oh. I hope you wouldn't laugh, Mr. Horace. So I'm in love with you, am I? Well, look, come on, shrimp. Climb up on this table so your loving husband can give you a kiss. All right. Help, help me up. What? what you, you mean to say you really think I'm going to kiss you? I should like you to kiss me, Mr. Horace. Well, I'll be... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Take it easy. Slow down, will you? I, I haven't told you all yet. You see, nobody ever gives me nothing. So I told the girls you gave me things, you know, like diamonds and jewelry and watches. So they think I've been giving you presents, huh? You made a nice mess of things, haven't you? Well, since you ain't dead, couldn't you go on saying nothing and let me go on pretending? I certainly could not. Say, you've got a nerve. It wouldn't cost you nothing. I thought you might oblige a lady. Oh, don't you see? I got nothing, Mr. Horace, nothing. Oh, come on, come on. Now, quit crying. You don't need to drown the place out. Tell tell the fool girls whatever you like. I don't care. But uh, give me my shirt, will you? Then I shan't have anything to remember you by. Well, I, 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 I don't know... Look, kid. Here. Here's a present for you. My tie pin. 42 karat gold. Diamond mounted, pearl center, emerald border, encrusted with rubies. 69 cents special. There you are, my dear. Oh, Mr. Horace. But now we're quits. I did want something to show the girls. And it's lovely. Oh, it's lovely. But, but it means you're going away forever. Couldn't you keep it and not go? Well, I should say not. I've got to go right now. The quicker the better, if you ask me. I could carry the shirt for you, Mr. Horace. It's a real nice strolling in the summer evenings, and it would be no trouble. You mean we could go for strolls every evening, huh? Is that what's on your mind? Oh, yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And what would my friends say? I wouldn't mind, Mr. Horace. Yeah, but what, what about me? I shouldn't expect you to marry me. Oh, thanks. Much obliged, I'm sure. I didn't even dream you'd marry me, really. Hey, look here, kid. I'm going to talk to you like a father. You're putting your money on the wrong horse. I'm straight. But if you was to talk to some guys like this... Oh, but I wouldn't. If you go walking with me, what'll the other girls say? You don't want to lose your character, do you? I wouldn't mind. Well, for the love of Pete, you don't seem to mind anything. Uh, I suppose all the other girls are going out tomorrow since it's a holiday, hmm? Oh, yes. And what about you? Hasn't anybody asked you? Haven't they? Nobody's asked me. Never. I see them all start out with their fellows every time. Oh, it don't matter, Mr. Horace. Oh, sure it does. Say, look here. Suppose I take you tomorrow. Do you mean it? What well, didn't I say it? Oh, Mr. Horace. All right, then. It's settled. I'll call for you at nine sharp tomorrow morning. You won't change your mind. Can I tell all the girls? Oh, you can tell the whole world if you like. Oh, won't the girls stare? Not one of them's got a fellow like you. You'll be here at nine. That's when the others go. Oh, you, you, mean, you mean the others start from here? Yes. Oh, uh, let me see, nine o'clock, yeah. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, uh listen, though, uh, 
I think we'd better meet us at, uh, at the drugstore on Elm Street, huh? Elm Street? Way down there? Well, well, well what, what's the matter with Elm Street? Everybody knows the drugstore. It, it's, a, it's a good place to meet, isn't it? I should have liked them all to see me going off with you. They'll never believe me otherwise. Oh, uh, Elm Street's much more convenient. Yes, there won't be the crowd there is here. Oh, that's it, that's it. We, we, we don't want crowds, do we? Uh, now, be sure and be there at nine. I'll pick you up. Uh, you could uh, stay in the drugstore, couldn't you, and uh, come out when I whistle? Oh, yes. I needn't show myself till you come. Oh, that's well, that's fine. Tomorrow at nine, then, Elm Street. Well, I'll be seeing you. Oh, Mr. Horace. Yeah? I, I can't go after all. Well, what do, you, what do you mean you can't go? Just a minute ago, you were dying to have somebody take you out. Uh, I've just been pretending all this just to see what you do. You see, I, my people wouldn't let me go out with strangers. But, but you said you haven't any folks. Oh, none of that's true. I've been very strictly brought up, and so, so I'm very much obliged to you, Mr. Greensmith. I mustn't accept your kind invitation. Well, for the love of Pete. So you made a fool out of me, huh? All right, girlie. You just wait till I bring you more washing to do. Now, don't be angry. You know it's a relief. What? Why, what do you mean, a relief? Not to have to take me out. A little hop of my thumb like me and having everybody laughing at you and asking what it was and where you picked it up and why they hadn't drowned it when it was born. Hey, hey, look. Now, cut, cut that out, will you... Who, who, whoever said I felt like that? Mr. Horace, may I keep the tie pin? Why, sure, you, you can keep whatever you want to. Well, I, I suppose I ought to burn it, but I can't. I, I'll keep it. Go ahead and keep it, uh, keep it for your, for your great-grandson. Huh? Mr. Horace, will you say you ain't angry before you go? Just, just to show there's no ill feeling. Say, say, let me look at you. Oh, now, listen, kid. Don't, don't cry. Oh, don't let me go. I, I guess we wasn't made for each other, little... What, what did you call yourself? Oh, a little hop on my thumb. But you're a game, little kid. Come on, give us that kiss I asked you for, hmm? Oh, Mr. Horace. There. I'm going this time. Oh. So long. Mr. Horace. Thank you very much, Zezu, for a swell performance. And thank you, Don, for one of your own. And uh, remember, Zezu, you have a date with Horace McCarthy in a little while. So, if you want to do some nose powdering, now's your chance. As Robert Arm Brewster conducts the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra in two lively continental hits. First, a little bit of Spain and bullfighting, El Relicario. And then a breeze from the Riviera and some fast fox trotting. My Temptation.
Pace and Sanborn Hour with Zazu Pitts, Dorothy Lamour, W.C. Fields, Hoagie Carmichael, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Robert Armbruster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra and Don Amici continues in just a moment. <laughs> My, oh, my, my. Trouble, 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 trouble. Life is earnest, but oh, so sad. Why, what's the matter, Charlie? You sound as if you'd lost your best friend. Oh, it's not me I'm thinking about now. This time, it's a change. It's I'm thinking about Miss Pitt. Oh, poor little Miss Hopper, my son. Wasn't that sad? She couldn't even get the man who wore the 14 and a half shirt. All oh, that. <laughs> oh, Charlie, I think you're wonderful. Hey, wait a minute. What is this? A love. Oh. Life for me is nothing but unrequited love. What again? Mm. Oh, poor sister. Say, but I know a man who's just crazy about you. Oh, dear me. Is he alive? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I wonder, have you met Mr. Bergen? Well, there is a very lonesome man. I can understand that. Yeah. I happen to know that he likes you. You could make him very happy, but he's so timid, you know. You'll have to be very forward. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'm too backward to be forward. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, Miss Pitts, he really is in love with you. He's nuts about you. Go ahead now. Fess up, Bergen. Now, what do you mean? Uh, in love, too timid. What is this? Hmm? I knew it wouldn't work. I never have any luck. Uh, oh, Mr. Bergen, are you going to stand there and deny that you weren't reading love lyrics last night? Well, I was, yes. Oh, how I enjoy poetry. Oh. I have written poetry. Uh-oh. Some of it even rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's called To a Lover and His Sweetheart. That ought to be good, yeah. Oh, you two are both so one-ish, like a double, yet a single. There is duo, still it's one-o, -oh, like a vision in a dream. <laughs> Think you got something there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, just what in heaven's name is that? It isn't much good. It's free verse. Free, you wouldn't be able to give it away. <laughs> Tell her about the one you wrote, Mr. Bergen. It's just about as good. <laughs> no, no, really. Oh, come on. No, it's just a silly... Oh, come on now. Come, come. <laughs> no, I'd rather not. Oh, come, come now. Come, come. <laughs> You want to be cold? Huh? All right, then. It was just a simple little thing. Oh, that's clear to see. Yes. Um, your hair is like the clouds in a storm-tossed sky. See, that's not it. The blue of the Pacific is in your eye. That's the left one, you know, the good one. <laughs> oh, isn't that sentimental? Yes. You can have your kingdom, your dukes and earls, but give me your teeth. They're just like pearls. Boy, oh boy, that's really dynamite there. <laughs> Take them out and show them. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> huh? There's more. It gets worse as it goes on. <laughs> your lips are like petals of a hothouse bicycle. All right. <laughs> Well, that gives you a fair idea how Bergen writes. Now, don't you think Zazu would make someone a very sweet wife? Oh, I certainly do. See? Mm. See? Well, then what are you waiting for? There you are. Now, let me set the wedding date. Wait a minute, dear. Oh, my. This is so sudden. What's the matter? What kind of a man do you want? Well, I think he should be rather, sort of, kind of, in a way. Like... Well, that's Bergen. That's Bergen. <laughs> you can't describe him. That's Bergen. <laughs> Well, and, well, have you ever known real love, Zazu? You know, real love? Mm. Well, in a way, I... Now, don't beat around the bush. Come clean now. <laughs> don't you believe marriage is a wonderful thing? Oh, you? indeed I do. Mm -hmm. I think love is just lovely and so romantic. Isn't that ducky? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, and she bakes a mean hunk of donut, Bergen, too. Oh, yeah. How about it, Zazu? It's not that I couldn't be very happy with Mr. Bergen, but... Well, then, what more do you want? Oh, well... I don't think my husband would like it. Yeah. Wow. So, by the way, how is he, Zazel? Yeah, how... Hey, wait a minute. Has Dan Cupid? I'm stupid. Truly on this requited love. <laughs> going around and around in my head, and I like it so much I can't stop listening to it. And I'd like to have you listen with me to I Hum a Walk. I hum a walk 
when you come to me on a night like this, I hum a waltz. Whenever I thrill to your kiss, the music plays. You're in my arms. And as we dance, we find that we're dancing to paradise. If only you will hum it too. Like a threatening storm that never breaks, like a bolt of lightning that never strikes, like a clap of thunder that grumbles and mumbles and rumbles, and boom, look at the rainbow, W.C. Field. <laughs> well, how you feeling, Don? Uh, I mean, how you feeling, Bill? I'm feeling all right, Bill. Which one am I? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess you're you. Uh, I don't feel too well, Don. On my way over here, a little nipper tried to set me on fire. Is that so, Bill? Yeah, I struck a match and tried to burn my nose. <laughs> Mistook it for a firecracker. Oh, well, that's an awful way to celebrate the fourth, Bill. Yeah, it's even a terrible way to celebrate the first. My brother was shot on the first, Don. Oh, he was, Bill? Yeah, he tried to open his own safe. Well, how was that? He thought it was his own save. <laughs> he walks in his sleep, you know. He went over to the bank and started monkeying around. The constable on the beat shot him. He immediately rushed my brother to the morgue. Uh, do, do you mean the hospital, Bill? You want me to tell this story, Don? Oh, good. sure, sure, Bill. All, all right, you, uh, you mean the morgue. Oh, now you're going to tell me what I mean. Oh, uh, please, please, Bill. Will you please go on? Then please be quiet, Don. Yeah, I I'm sorry. Your brother walks in his sleep and he was shot by a policeman. Oh, you know the story, then. <laughs> no, no, Bill, I don't know the story then, and I don't know... Now, no, please, will, will you, you go listen? on, Bill? All right, sure, Bill. All right. My father was summoned immediately to the cemetery. Oh, are we in the when cemetery now? No, the morgue. 
Well, Bill, please, let's keep this thing straight. Your brother and your father were, uh, were... Why what? do you take such a keen interest in my family affairs, Doc? <laughs> Well, I, I mean nothing personal, Bill. I, I, I'm just interested in your story, that's all. Oh, so you're not interested in my family at all. <laughs> just want me to tell about them. Then you go and gab it all over the country. Is that the idea? Oh, now, please, please, Bill. I'm exhausted. Uh, would you like a little drink? <laughs> I have a couple of bottles of scotch here. I always carry two quarts with me for medicinal purposes, Don. <laughs> of course, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to make the judge and the doctor look bad. <laughs> yeah, but look, now, Bill, where, where were we? I don't know, I forgot. There's absolutely too much argument going on here. Fish, flash, bloop, flounder. I'm continuing my column, Don. I nearly forgot all about it. Yeah, flounder, fluke, flash, flash. We're off again, boys. Flash, flash. Flash, flash. Uh, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute, Bill. Here, here's Charlie. Oh, uh, that little rat's in again. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Go away, you lowest form of plant life. I, uh, I just came here to bring you a great admirer of yours, Miss uh, Tazu Pitt. Go She's away, got a crush you on you. Go away, you yes. attract ants. Well, uh, <laughs> I'd rather have my ants than your uncle's. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy to see you, Mr. Fields. This uh, is a reunion for me. Now, quiet, please. I'm talking about my column. Oh, Mr. Fields, how do you get your wonderful news? Uh, I ride horseback through Hollywood. Side saddle. Oh, isn't that nice? Uh, I like to weave in and out amongst the automobiles and frighten the chauffeurs the way they used to frighten the horses in the early days. Oh, say, that's a great idea, Bill. Yeah, fish, flam, fluke, fly, fish. Went to Paramount today. Uh, went, went, went where, Bill? Paramount. Bill, please. All right, make it universal. Uh, you got me so mixed up now, I don't know whether I'm drinking Paramount coffee or making Chase and Sanborn dated pictures. Oh, all right, Bill, all right. Go on, go on. Went down to Paramount and asked the various stars and executives and pickets as they enter. <laughs> if they knew anyone who was going to have a baby, they didn't seem to know, or they would have at least answered me. Surely, Clyde. Uh, wait, wait a minute, Bill. You, you know Miss Pitts, don't you? Oh, yeah. Hello, Zuzu. It's <laughs> All right, I'm writing a column. Do you know anybody's going to have a baby? No, but I have a little son who's crazy about you. Oh, that's fine. Dismiss it. Crazy about me. <laughs> First flash, Luke, an open letter. The puce de puce. The great French fry, fine, uh, French, uh, French actor. You're getting all, you're getting me all mixed up now, Zuzu. Please stay quiet. It's Vazu. Isn't he a comical man? Uh, face <laughs> there. Move over, Zulu. You're crowding. You're putting a hand... Go away. Move over. Go away, Zulu. An open letter to Puse to Puse. You were walking on Hollywood Boulevard last week when two honest, honest working men carrying their kittles greeted you as you passed. <laughs> Peace again. Howdy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toots, they shouted. Oh, how shocking. Uh, just a minute, Don. Bear with me. An open letter to Madame de Puse. You arched your eyebrows, pointed your retouche nose to heaven, and walked even faster, drawing your silken French frock tighter about your slightly plump figure. Oh, I just love French frock. When I was in Paris... Oh, will you keep quiet, Zulu? It's Zazu. Uh, why don't you go and sit over there and be comfortable? Take a fan. <laughs> Madame de Pute, one of these gentlemen were street cleaners, as you claim. They may not have the suave manner of your French fries... Fr uh, uh, the region full of our dear who shouts ooh la la at the slightest provocation. Ooh la la. Ooh la la. I'm sorry I started it. Oh, how romantic. How I wish I was back in Paris now. So do I. Well, Mr. Fields, do you really mean that you wish I was in Paris? Anywhere in Europe will do. Fish, flat, blue, fleek. Blue, fleek, fleek, flank, fish. A fish means soul fit. Still have soul. Uh, don't interrupt me again, please, Zulu. It's they what? do. Oh, I know it. What if these American gentlemen do sweet streets? Their honest hearts are made of gold. Uh, how true. And the way they charge over there is something terrible. Don, why don't you take her away? Will you please be quiet, Zulu? Madame de Pucy, why don't you invite them to your suite in the hotel? Ask him to have some of your French petit de foie gras with moutard. Now, uh, that's goose liver with mustard. Oh, will you please keep quiet? Give them some frog's legs. Uh, do you like frog's legs, Mr. Fields? 
I never saw one with a good pair in my life. <laughs> Go over there. <laughs> Go over there, Sulu, and lie down the bass drum until they start playing something. Oh, thank you. Madame de Pusey, give them some cheval rosé. And what's that? Roast horse. <laughs> they will be only too willing. Will you stop asking me questions, Zulu? <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm talking about now with all these interruptions. <laughs> this was a swell column when I thought of it this morning. What was I talking about, Don? De Pusey, de Pusey. Oh, I thank you, Don. De Pusey, de Pusey. Oh, excuse me. Wouldn't it be funny if she had a daughter named Kitty de Kitty? Nah. <laughs> Be much funner if I funnier if I took the tube and crowned you with it. Go ahead and scratch yourself. <laughs> they will be only too willing to listen to reason. Go easy, if you say, if you say, until at least they have seen the test. And I don't mean you, or you, or who, or what have you. Now, have you anything to say, Zulu? Well, uh, who do you mean, Bill? Oh, uh, face flash, blue flounder, face flash. Oh, Mr. I'm too Field. tired. Do you know what my boy always says about you? Uh, it doesn't matter, Zulu. The name is Zazu. All right, Zazu, but don't be so aggressive. <laughs> my boy is always talking about you, Mr. Field. Still doesn't matter, dear. I told him the other day, if you're so crazy about Mr. Field, why don't you go and live with him? Oh, you did, did you? What is she getting up to now? Well, what do you think he said, Mr. I Field? haven't the slightest idea, and I don't care. Well, my son said, not without you, Mother. Mm -hmm. He always wants to go someplace. Mm -hmm. I can tell you both where to go. <laughs> oh, dear, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll just have to go through life the victim of unrequited love. Well, don't count on me for any help. <laughs> Even in the picture, 52nd Street, which I played in for Walter Wanger, made over at United Artists... Paramount! 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 Hey, hey, wait, wait a minute. Let me get in on this, fellas, will you? 20th Century Fox! 20th Century Fox! <laughs> I sing a little song in 52nd Street. I wouldn't care if you sang it in 14th Street. <laughs> but, Mr. Field... Well, I'm going to sing it for you now. Don't do me any favors. Oh, we, we'd love to hear it, Miss Pitts, wouldn't we, Bill? Speak for yourself. <laughs> This is interfering with my field's fine fun with famous film folks in Hollywood. Yeah, well, well, we'll we'll take that later. All right, Miss Pitt. It's called Twenty Three To Do. I still this is don't the way it goes. It. I had his picture in my locket. Whose picture? What's a photograph about? that he had sent. His loving letters in my pocket. How I adore this handsome gem. Is she singing or sobbing? And there was I to meet him where the swans are on the lake. Well, I've got a great swan story to tell you, Don, when she gets through with this crash. Yeah, 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 Bill. Now go on, Miss Pitts. He'd know me by... He, he'd know me. Yeah. He'd know me by a parasol of lace. Parasol of lace. That's funny. They're out of style. They went out with the lace pantaloons. When suddenly a cabbie stopped. She means chauffeur. Oh, dear, I'm afraid the song will be spoiled. If you don't want to spoil it, what are you singing it for? <laughs> My heart began to quake, and there we stood at last, face to face. Imagine face him looking face. into her face and her looking into his face. How better it was a standoff. <laughs> this is terrible. All he said was 23 to do. My kingdom for I a mean, giant Roman candle right now. He said that to me. There was I expecting, I love you. That he said 23, Skidoo. Say, well, hey, that's cute, Bill, isn't it? Don't consult me. I might be prejudiced. <laughs> <laughs> underneath my ostrich feather hat. Rather unfortunate you weren't underneath the ostrich. <laughs> underneath... Uh, this is impossible to follow, Mr. Amici. Why, why? What's the trouble, Bob? Either Mr. Field stops spouting or Mr. Pitt stops screeching or I stop playing. Oh, if it stops playing, she might quit, too. Who is that Eskimo? Why, that... <laughs> Bill, that's our maestro at the piano, Bob Armbruster. Oh, yes. Hi, Bob. I remember when he used to play an organ. Yeah, you said it. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever became of the monkey? Well, if... <laughs> if you want to come back, just say the word. <laughs> I left an opening for that one. I'm glad they didn't hear it. Uh... <laughs> All right, now, Miss Pitt. My beaver moth. Beaver moth reminds me of my poor old grandmother. She used to be the bearded lady in the circus, Donna Rossler. They called her Grandma Dean. I have saved for weeks to buy them new. But he said 23, Skidoo. I said Skidoo. He wanted you to stand to take it on the lamp. I said Skidoo. Will you please go away? I 
said. Fish, flag, Louis, Fish, flag, 23 flag, skidoo. Thank flag, you to Zazu Fruit. Pitts, and thank you very much, W.C. Fields. Remember the next time you're uncomfortably warm, you'll be very glad to know these facts about iced coffee. If you want iced coffee to be more delicious and more refreshing, be sure the melting ice doesn't thin out the flavor and make it weak and watery. You can easily avoid that if you do two simple things. Make your coffee a little stronger than usual, and be sure to use the blend that gives you the extra rich flavor you need. Chase and Sanborn coffee. This superb blend of the world's choice coffees always comes to you at its very best. For our dating plan and rapid delivery system, guarantee freshness and full flavor every time. This system also makes expensive containers needless. Instead, we pack this marvelous blend in the economical dated bag and use the saving to give you finer coffee at a lower price. Try this rich, satisfying blend. It's delicious either hot or iced. Buy a pound of Chase and Sanborn dated coffee from your grocer tomorrow. A short time ago, Hoagie Carmichael told us how he was inspired to write his song. But here's another brand new one written with Stanley Adams, which was inspired by a very dear and close friend, an old felt hat, and written especially for us. So, here we go. I love you like my old felt hat. Oh, it's plain to see that you comfort me. I love you like I love my pipe and backy. Took a look at you and my heart went wacky. Think of how a bee loves buzz. And a hungry fly loves an apple pie. I love you, baby, just like that. Like a horse in a stable loves his oat. And a Tammany hauler loves to vote. But if you're not impressed with that, I love you like my old felt hat. I tip my hat to you, Dorothy. It's your turn. I love you like my old chapeau Oh, it's plain to see that you comfort me I love you like I love my puff and powder Took a look at you and my heart beat louder Think of how a cow loves moo And of Crosby who loves the boo-boo-boo I love you, baby, just like that like a lone little shepherd loves his sheep And the guy in the center loves to sleep I think it's mighty time you know I love you like my old chapeau Well, it's your hat, Hoagie. Go on, put it on. Don't kick the hat, Charlie. There may be a brick under it. I love you like my silk hat. Oh, it's plain to see. You're the top to me. I love you like I love to tease a Michi. Took a look at you and I yelled, Chee, Chee, Chee. Just like Willie Fields loves fight. And a taxi cab loves passing light. I love you, Dottie, just like that. Like a lonely old miser loves his dough. Like a bald headed bachelor loves the front row. But if you're not impressed with that, I'll never tell another lie. <laughs> I love you like my old felt hat. 
Oh, it's plain to see that you comfort me. I love you like I love my puff and powder. Took a look at you and my heart beat louder. Think of how a bee loves bugs and a hungry fly loves an apple pie. I love you, baby, just like that. Like a lone little shepherd loves his sheep and the guy in the center loves to sleep. But if you're not impressed with that, I love you like my old pal Pat. Well, there always must be an au revoir, and I'm saying it now for our guests, Vezu Pitts and Hoagie Carmichael, and for our regular company, W.C. Field, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Dorothy Lamour, and Robert Armbruster. Next Sunday, we shall have as our special guests, Gladys George and Ray Middleton. We'll all be looking forward to meeting you again, so until next Sunday at the same time, this is yours sincerely, Don Amici saying au revoir. Heard on this program were I Hum a Waltz from This Is My Affair and The Big Show from Jerome Kern's Head Over Heels. The makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee, a blend of the world's choice coffees, will bring you next week Gladys George, Dorothy Lamour, W.C. Fields, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Ray Middleton, Robert Armbruster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra and Don Amici. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company.